There are a lot of great apps that just recently came out, and unfortunately I didn't have the time to cover them when they were released. So I figured I'd do a video covering them all, and then if you guys had any questions, I can make a more in-depth video about a specific one if you like. So let's take a look. So first up is Kodak. Kodak is a new text editor for the iOS that focuses on writing code. It supports tons of different languages, including some of my favorites, Swift, Objective-C, HTML, JavaScript, and it even has PowerShell for those working in a Windows environment. Codex has full file support, so you can open and save documents to any cloud storage or an app that supports files. When prompting to create a file, it also prompts you to change the file name or create the file name, but you can also change the file extension too. So if you use things like Markdown, you can change it to .md. It's really easy to change the language you're writing for. Just tap the code button in the top right corner and select what you want to write your code in. In the settings menu, there are a ton of customization options you would come to expect. You can change things like font and text size, line spacing, and even the editor theme. If you go into behaviors, you can customize the way the app works. And one of my new favorite features I like to see on, in iPad apps now is you can create custom keyboard shortcuts. So you can change the way the keyboard shortcuts work already. That's really, really handy. Kodak does a really great job of syntax highlighting as well. Due to iOS restrictions, you can't compile the code on your iPad, but what I can do is I can send it to a server and have it compiled there. I'd really like to see Apple ease up on this rule, but for right now, my workaround kind of works. If you're somebody that wants to write code on an iPad, I highly recommend you check this app out, and the best part about it is it's completely free. Things 3 is the fancy new task manager on the App Store. I really love Todoist, but the developers of Things put a ton of work into the app and it really shows. One thing I see a lot with task managers is they either have way too much stuff and they're impossible to use, the app just is just bogged down with too much stuff, or they're stripped down so much you might as well just be using pen and paper. Things does a great job of finding a middle ground, blending both design and feature sets together. On the left side you have an organization system, and depending on how you sort your tasks, some of these will be more important than others. The first option is Inbox. If you like just to make a task but not assign a date, this is where they'll be. This is great if you have a list of tasks that you need to do and just need a place to put them so you can go through the list and move along. Then there are scheduling options. So here you have the today view so it'll show every task that is due today. Then you have upcoming with a sort of pseudo calendar view so you can see all the tasks that you have scheduled that are coming up soon. The anytime object will show any task that has a due date regardless of when it is due. When creating a new task, you can hit the calendar button to schedule a new task, but instead of picking a date, you can hit someday. This is great for a task that you want to do someday, but you don't necessarily have time for it right now, or maybe it's just something you'd like to do in the future. When creating a new task, you can even create a checklist inside the task. This is just really handy if there's multiple steps to one specific task. Of course, there are also supports for things like projects, but something I haven't seen in other task managers is the idea of areas. Basically, this is a way to group a bunch of different projects together. So I group all of my video projects in under one area. Things has a ton of features and I can cover them in a more in-depth video if you're all interested. Notebook apps seem to be really popular right now, with the most popular ones being either GoodNotes or Notability. Both those are really great apps, but they're lacking something I want all of my note-taking apps to support. This is where Noteflow comes in. Noteflow has support for a lot of great features that both GoodNotes and Notability have, but it also has support for the Files app. The best part is the basic version of Noteflow is free, but if you do need more advanced features, there is a pay-for version available in the App Store. You can do everything you can think of with a notebook app, including writing with the Apple Pencil, dragging and dropping images in, typing text, and so much more in Noteflow. You can also change the paper type as well. I personally really like line paper. Noteflow has support for customizing your own theme as well. The only roadblock I ran into when using the app was I wanted to export a document to PDF, but that is a pro feature and requires the paid for version. Instead, what I did was I exported the document to an email and then dragged and dropped the PDF into Yoink. This made the PDF available for me to do anything I want to with it now. Now, this is just a workaround. If you're considering using the app for your work, consider buying the full version and supporting the developer. With the full version, you get great features like page size options, more export options, import PDFs, calendars, and a lot more. I'll definitely be making Noteflow my go-to notebook app for sure now. Unichar is an interesting app. The whole point of this app is to find shortcuts to Unicode images. I find this handy so I don't have to remember what the Unicode shortcut is for any, any given symbol. So if you ever need an obscure symbol that isn't on a standard keyboard, I highly recommend checking this app out. I know I like to use the Apple logo a lot for me. Unichar is a free app to download, but if you want the full library, it is $2.99 in-app purchase.
I know I did a video on Drafts5 already, but I think it's such an important app that I should mention it again briefly. I've heard from a lot of you about the stuff that you're doing with Drafts, and I think it's really, really impressive. I said in my video, Drafts is the Swiss army knife of text, and I really stand by that. No matter what you are writing, when you are done, you're going to want to send that text someplace. And this is what Drafts does best. With the action menu, you can send this to your blog, Twitter, iMessage, wherever you think text can go, Drafts can send it there. You can also build custom actions, so if the built-in ones don't fit your needs, there is a way to get an action to fit exactly what you want. And if you're not too sure about building your own actions, there's a great online directory for those that have built custom actions, so you can just download them and use them yourself. Drafts is a super impressive app, and there's so much more to it. I'm going to link to my walkthrough below, and I do plan on doing a more in-depth automation video on the application. I talked a few videos back about an app called Textor, and the idea behind it, it was a plain text editor that works right in the Files app. Well, after that, I put out that video, an app called Pretext came out, and Pretext is very similar to Textor, but it includes Markdown support. Just like Textor, Pretext works and lives in the Files app, and this is something that I find really handy because I have a lot of text documents that are either in Dropbox or iCloud. When you create a document, you get an option to create either a markdown file or a text file. You can name a document right there and pre-pin the date to the front of it if that's something you need. Pretext has some great features as well. You can change the text size, but I would like to see a feature to be able to change the font as well. For an in-app purchase, you can get dark mode themes and custom icons. And overall, I find this to be a really handy app. Both this and Textor do a lot of really great things for people that have to work with plain text documents every day. For my day job, I live and breathe in plain text documents all day long. So this helps tr me tremendously. So this last app isn't really a new app, but I've kind of been trying to find a way to fit it in my videos. So I'm just going to kind of shoehorn it in here. And this one is CornerTube. One thing that annoys me about YouTube is they want you to pay for YouTube Red in order to use the system features like picture in picture. With CornerTube, you can just send the video to an app using it via the share sheet so you can watch it in picture in picture. If you like to work or play around with YouTube going in the side, this is a really handy way to get that without having to pay for a YouTube Red subscription. I really like this app. Like I said, it's not exactly a new application, but I found it really handy so I can keep working and watching great YouTube videos while I'm at it. So these are some of the new applications that have been out since I kind of came back from my break. I'd love to hear from you guys if you found any new apps in the description below, and thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like these videos and what I'm doing here, I'd really appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe to uh, the channel. Thank you guys so much, and have a great day.